Hello there, kids. It is I, Stray Cat, the one and only, coming in with another episode of Knights of the Old Republic. All right, when we left off, I was a little confused on the uh, path I should take, <laughs> mainly because, um, well, I didn't really know uh, which one to take that would, you know, give us the most content for the game, because I kind of want to do that for you guys. I kind of want to show you the most content we can for the game. Wow, it is dark in here. Holy shit, I cannot see a thing. <laughs> um, if I can turn that up a little bit. There, that should make it a little easier to see. Better. All right. And I'm going to look for Candorus so I can talk to him real quick because it's been a while since I talked to everyone. Yeah, what do you want? I was wondering if you had any more war stories. You want another war story, huh? You want to hear about some other world getting wasted, eh? I knew you were the type. Your um, Second Republic has never seen some of the strange creatures and races we fought on the Outer Rim in those years. <laughs> and you never will now. What do you mean? If a world isn't strong enough to defend itself, it's basically forfeit. But this story... Is about something a little different. We were going through the asteroid fields of the Crispin system at the very edge of the galaxy, playing with the pirates and smugglers we found there. Okay. The main belt in the Crispin system consists of mainly small rocks covered in frozen methane gas shells, and the pirates were using them for cover. Ha! <laughs> I remember using a thermal generator to cause the outer layer of one of the asteroids to vaporize in a picosecond. It blew out and shredded the three smugglers using it for cover. But that was a mistake. Did it backfire? The asteroid I had targeted was smaller than most. Maybe a dozen meters on a side. On the outside, it looked the same as any other. Just a ball covered in frozen gas. Right. Something must have been inside it. Something inactive in the cold. The heat of my blast might have triggered something or woken something up. After I'd hit it, Woken spots of something light and up. heat appeared all over the thin shell, still covering it, evaporating the gases. What lay underneath looked like some sort of rocky growth. A deformed rock, pitted by scores of micrometeorite scars. I think something even older might have been inside that. Uh, okay, then. Very interesting. An asteroid? Maybe, but maybe not. It started rotating faster and faster as we watched it. Oh. After a second, it started spraying fire. Thermal projectiles that melted our armor like wax. We were caught completely by surprise. Jesus. Before we could counterattack, it fled at an incredible speed. A ship? We couldn't catch it, but we could follow its hyperspace wake. We followed its trail as far as we could, heading away from the galactic core. When it finally led beyond the edge of our galaxy, we abandoned our efforts. Anything that wants huh. to commit suicide in that great void is not worth our trouble trying to catch. That's uh, the only story I have for now. I'll tell you some more stuff later if we get the chance. Is there something else you want to know? Um, nothing in particular. Uh, nothing more Your for choice. now. Your choice. I'm here if you want something done right. Interesting. A ship that was caught in frozen gas that survived the explosion of it and then proceeded to travel into unknown space. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting indeed. Yes. What is it? Is something wrong? I was... Remembering Taris. I am sorry, Johanny. No, it's all right. I think I am over the worst of it. I apologize again for lashing out at you. It was not your fault. It was a horrible place to have to live. Mm -hmm. At least in the lower cities where the non-humans tended to get relegated. Living for years in a place with no sun, living off the trash dropped from the upper levels, and the meager pay doing back-breaking labor. And those rack ghouls. There was always the danger of rack ghouls coming up from the sewers. 
or more mundane predators living and working in the area. My family and I struggled each and every day to make something of our lives. But we could only go so far. Taxes from the corrupt government, more fees from the gangs controlling the streets, mm -hmm. and whatever was left paying for what food and medical supplies we could afford. No one would help you? And of course, there was the constant bigotry and hate from the more affluent and human citizens, lording their wealth over us living below. Mm. Every once in a while, a rich human would come down through the lower levels with his droid entourage just to see how the wildlife lived and laughed at the mockeries that were our successes. Jesus. But I have come to meet many decent humans in my travels since those days. Indeed, some of the greatest people I have ever met are human. Well, I mean, that is a way to look at it. I mean, it basically proves that not everyone will be, uh, you know, a scumbag, but then, you know, not everyone will be a decent human either. Like who? The Jedi who encouraged me to join the Order. The one who was with the group going to fight the Mandalorians. She was human. I'm oh. sorry. Okay. I'm getting away from my point. If there even was one. Sometimes I curse the day my parents fled to Taris. But then again, if they had not, I would not be where I am today. And... Great. Fled from where? Another story for another time. For now, we must continue our own epic to save the galaxy if we can. Fair enough. Can't really argue with that. Oh, I'm not controlling <laughs> Farron Conwell. Uh, Karth, can I talk to you? Do you want to talk? Talk about what? The only thing I want to do right now is find Dustal. If he's alive. There's just nothing else I want to think about. I'll understand if we can't look for him right now, but if we could, it would be a huge load off my mind. Yeah, that's fair enough, I guess. But, uh, not something we can do, especially if we plan on getting all the content we possibly can out of this game. But, uh, I don't think there's much else I need to talk to. Maybe... Wait, no. No, I'm pretty sure... I'm pretty sure with, uh... Bastila, we're kind of at the last bits that we can possibly do. Candorus's tale of his encounter in an asteroid field on the Outer Rim, but do not know what to make of it. Maybe talking to him further will make things more clear. Jahani's parents fled to Taurus from the homeworld of her species. Unfortunately for them, Taurus was very oppressive towards alien species. Life was not easy for them. Perhaps she will tell you more in time. Understandable. What am I doing? I don't think I traveled to the next planet. I think we're still on fucking Kashyyyk. Oh, I'm an idiot. Alright. I'll fix that. I'll fix it. We go to Manan. That is the next planet that we're going to. Or at least the one I planned to go to. <laughs> Onward to Manan. Oh boy. Here we go. Why is it so shadowy in this room? Kalo Nord is dead, Lord Malik. He has failed in his mission. Forgive me. The penalty for failure is death, Admiral Carath. But the failure was Kalo's. Not he was yours. sitting there just waiting you to die because he knew he Shall might. I hire another bounty hunter, Lord Malik. No mere bounty hunter can stand against a Jedi. I shall not make the same mistake again. My apprentice, Darth Bandon. She'll take care That's a hell of a name. Jedi friend. How does anyone get any work done in this room, considering how dark it is? 
Oh, dark and foreboding. Okay, I see. Okay. All right. I'll have to show how big a badass you are by being the most evil motherfucker in the room. Gotcha. All right. Okay. Point made. Find Bastla and bring her to me, alive if possible. As you command, Master. Uh huh. Tossing and turning in my sleep. Dreaming about the star map. And the FMV broke. There it goes. And here we are in Manan. You felt it, yes? Yes. Another vision? The Force continues to work through us, showing us the star maps unearthed by Revenant Malak. It is strange that anyone would have built a star map here. The entire surface of Manan is covered by nothing but vast oceans. Huh. Maybe the land was once above the surface. It is possible. The melting of polar caps or a cataclysmic earthquake could have buried the land beneath the waves eons ago. Records from that time are incomplete. The ocean floor is of vast course. and much of it is uncharted, even by the native Selkarth. But how could Revan and Malak have found their way down? No Good doubt question. things will become more clear once we discover the star map's location. Well, I guess we'll find out as we go, won't we? Since we're here, can I get more conversation out of these two? How may I be of assistance to you, Padawan? Uh, I was wondering if we could talk. What is it you would like to speak to me about? Uh, tell me more about your past. Well, I mentioned before that my parents had fled to Taris. Perhaps I can tell you about that. Please do. In the early days of the Mandalorian War, there had been fighting closer to the Outer Rim worlds. Mm -hmm. Near the world your species comes from. Cathar was there, yes. My people had a great reputation as warriors, and that appealed to the Mandalore version of honor. They sought to see. test themselves against us, I think. Test themselves by bombing our world, slaughtering my people while they slept or while they ran. That sounds like a bunch of war crimes actually a little bit Jesus the Mandalorians fought dirty they swooped down from space across the world firing at anything that moved they used ships in space to destroy all orbital facilities and bombard the surface we did resist and in spite of their violent attack we did stave them off for quite a while but in the end we were doomed. Why did the Republic not help you? We were not members of the Republic. Oh. Cathar was beyond the edge of the Republic, in the Outer Rim. And besides, they could not have known. Mm -hmm. Our interstellar communications were the first things the Mandalores hit. Of course. All other short-range communicators were jammed. We were on our own. We knew what was coming. We had fought the Mandalorians in the first war against Exar Kun and the Sith. Oh. We knew there would be no mercy for us. The most we could do was pack the few of our people who survived onto what few ships there remained and send them off into space as fast as they could. Most did not make it. What about your family? My parents carried me as a baby with them and were lucky enough to escape. They fled as far as they were able and eventually settled on Taris. They could stand running no further, I think. But Taris was a horrible choice. Dominated by humans, intolerant of other species, made everyday life unnecessarily hard. Jesus. 
Taurus is not a nice place to raise a child. No, it is not. But they had little choice. Each of us dealt with it in our own way. My father... My father turned to stimulants. Ugh. He spent much of his time in local bars and... Unfortunate. Bars. We are warriors. It runs through our blood. And when he was on stims, he, he... He became foolish. He let his warrior nature get the best of him. So he would get intoxicated. And he would fight. And finally, one day, he would die. How did he die? Killed by a man who provoked him into a fight and killed him like an animal. Jesus. I, I am sorry. I I cannot talk about this any longer right now. I, I don't blame you. I don't blame you. That is rough. Fuck, girl. I am sorry. You went through sh so much shit told me how she lived with her parents on Taurus and how her father was killed one day in a bar fight. There should be an A in there somewhere. This is a very sensitive issue for her. She might tell you more in the future. That's fair. Let's talk to Candorus then. Because these two I haven't really pushed too much further. I haven't talked too much to uh, HK either, now that I think about it. Yeah, what do you want? I was wondering if you had any more war stories. I don't have as many strange stories like the last one I told you. But I do have a couple about me and the stuff I've done. Okay. In one battle above the world of Althea, my unit managed to defeat a force of Althea ten times our own size. That huh. battle gained me command of an entire subsect of my clan. I think I know where this is going. For five days they had managed to hold off our forces keeping us to the outer rings of their world, preventing us from attacking it directly. Uh -huh. My task was to assault one of their flanks with a false attack. The Altheri would be drawn out by the units I had sent in. Once they had surrounded those units, the bulk of my forces would attack from the rear and defeat them in detail. Did it work? Things didn't go as I had planned. I saw an opening. A mistake they had made in the disposition of their forces and took it. While fending off our main force, they had let their fleet split in two. The center of their Whoa. entire fleet was left exposed. I turned my forces and assaulted the center of their fleet, decimating them. That is a massive mistake to make. No wonder you exploited it. What did they do? Their slow, ponderous ship could not turn to face us without being overwhelmed. The command vessels were destroyed in seconds. Their ranks were thrown into chaos. It was amusing to watch the surviving ships scatter and flee. Several even tried to dive through the plane of the rings to escape us. They were shredded by the rings or crashed into rocks or were destroyed by our forces as we pursued them. Warriors do not flee from a battle if they are losing. They fight to the end as we did against your Jedi Revan. Another time, maybe, I'll tell you about how the war with the Republic went. For now, let's just get on with things. Is there something else you want to know? Not particularly. That was really all I... Eh, do you know anything about this world? Water worlds never had much of an appeal for us to conquer. They may put up a good fight on their own environment. No match for us, of course. But they don't really have anything of value, either. The thing this world is good for is a substance known as Kolto. Kolto is the single best healing substance in the galaxy. But the Mandalore are not as weak True. and fragile as your Republic and Sith warriors. When we enter a battle, we carry weapons powerful enough to pulverize cities. Both in our wars and in our own personal combats, there are no survivors. So Kolto does not hold the appeal it does for your peoples. You have anything else you want to ask? Ah. Uh... More war stories after that? But because I guess he decided to just rag on the Sith and the uh, Republic for having Kulto, uh, wanting to keep their people alive, which is, you know, probably a good thing in a war. Hmm. I think I'll tell you a bit about the recent war we had. Oh, with he's the actually going to tell me. Okay, cool. That might be more familiar to you. A the little. One where Jedi Revan beat my people. We started by conquering worlds outside the Republic. 
We did it quietly so the Republic wouldn't really know what was going on until it was too late. When we finally did hit the Republic worlds, they had no idea we were coming. We came in through three invasion corridors in adjacent sectors. Anyone who put up a fight, or wouldn't fight, was crushed. We raised whole worlds trying to provoke the Republic into fighting us. I don't particularly enjoy wiping out worlds for its own sake. But the cowardly tactics the Republic defenders used left us little choice. You had the choice not to destroy them. They had a choice not to fight. We meet the enemy wherever they are hiding and we wipe them out. A few cities is a small price to pay for a world. Hiding in the homes of civilians, using families as shields thinking we would not use appropriate force on their bases inside major cities. They underestimated our resolve, and what measures are acceptable in war. Those who cannot defend themselves should not be around those who can in battle. If annihilating a city is the kind of power it takes to overwhelm a Republic shield device, then that's what we did. Necessary force to destroy all opposition. Jesus. They are ruthless. What the fuck? There's no honor in any of that. You're not even giving them a fair chance. Jesus. You could have found another way. I have no time or patience for cowards. They deserve to be hunted down and exterminated like vermin. There was no honor in wiping them out like rats. But some of your forces did redeem the Republic in our eyes. Especially later. You mean when we kicked her tails? Later, when Revan had joined the war. But we'll get back to that. We've wasted too much time already. Is there something else you want to know? Nothing Your more for choice. Now. I'm here if you want something done right. We went through at least two stories there. Yeah, Maybe we can go for another one? Nope. Not a thing. I'm here if you want something done right. <sighs> Crap. Okay. HK-47. HK-47 is ready to serve, Master. You don't need to call me Master, you know. Query. Don't I? I was under the assumption that organic meat bags such as yourself enjoyed such forms of address. Organic meat bags? Retraction. Did I say that out loud? I apologize, Master. While you are a meat bag, I suppose I should not call you such. You just called me a meat bag again! Explanation. It's just that you have all these squishy parts, Master. And all that water. How the constant sloshing doesn't drive you mad, I have no idea. Trust me, me too. <laughs> Neither do I, come to think of it. Statement. Now do you understand the travails of my existence, Master? Surely it does not compare to your existence, but still... I survive. Somehow. Commentary. As do I. It is our lot in life, I suppose, Master. Shall we find something to kill to cheer ourselves up? <laughs> I mean... <laughs> uh, if you want to. That's not necessarily what I'm going to do. There we go. I was just making sure there's no one over here. Or anything like that. I think I finished everything with, uh... With mission, too, didn't I? I'm pretty sure. Double check real quick. Uh... Did I not? Mission's brother. Uh... I do need to go back to uh, Taurus to finish that. Hey there. Not Taurus. Uh, Tatooine. Maybe if we get these tat glands for him, things will work out. Or maybe he'll finally see the light and turn over a new leaf. I know it's not likely, but it's all I have to hope for. Okay, fair enough. But uh, we, we can do that later. We can do that part later, I guess. Right now, let's head out with... Jihani and Candorus. Because while the rest of them do need level ups, I might as well get these uh, these two out of the way. Yep. 
Yep, there we go. Uh, there we are. And Candorous, Jesus, he's so dark side. Holy fuck. Um, let's up his constitution a little bit, huh? Let's go for injury. And what do we got here? Put it into toughness. There we go. And then one in demolitions, because fuck it, why not? Master rapid shot? Sure. And another retreat injury. Why not? Um, master power blast? Sure. Because we have a lot of level ups we can give them, so why not? Uh, another in demolitions. And... Well, everything else important is done. Implants. Okay. Another one for attributes. Now I know why I wanted to do constitution. <laughs> it ups his ability to get better implants later on. Um, to treat injury again. And let's... I can do the next one. Cool. There we go. And we're good. Jihani has attributes as well that we can up. Hmm. A high charisma adds modifiers to force-related feats and powers that are very important to all the Jedi classes. Sure, why not? It's already there for another level. Might as well up it again. Um, yeah, we'll do that. Looks good to me. Master Force Jump and Master Sense. So she's getting up there and strength and whatnot. And coolness and all that. Uh, closes the distance almost instantly and also receives a plus four to hit as opposed to plus two. Okay. All right. Fair enough. Grants a plus six defense and is always active. Okay. Let's master her uh, two-weapon fighting ability. Let's do that. And when it comes to powers... But fuck it. Get her combat-oriented powers. Why not? Sounds good to me. All right, here we are. And it doesn't look like any containers for me to open around the bay. All right. Cool. And here we are. You Republic people are so pathetic, sitting around groveling at the table scraps the Galactic Senators deign to give you. It makes me sick. The Senators work for the good of the whole galaxy, not for individual gain. Ha! Don't make me laugh, you gutless simp. It's the destiny. <laughs> hey, it's the word that's like you banned from Twitch. Over by the strong, like we Sith. I'm warning you. Don't push me or you'll get just what you're asking for. Try it. Just try it. I'd love to see you throw the first punch. And with all the cameras around, the cell cath would be all over you inside of 30 seconds. You break their laws. You pay the price, Republic scum. But I can see that you're not man enough to back up your words anyway. If you ever feel like relieving yourself of your worthless existence, feel free to come by our enclave here. We have many, many ways to fulfill your wish. But wouldn't that also be breaking the laws? Bud? <sighs> did, did you really think that through? Yeah, what are you... Oh, I apologize, Master Jedi. I should not have been rude. No, it's all fine. It's fine. No, really. I should apologize. I, I should try to control myself. As you Jedi do. Is there anything I can help you with? I mean... It takes a lot of training to be able to do what I do. Let's be honest. Why did the Sith upset you so much? Well, these damn Sith are everywhere on Manan. Pushing us Republic citizens around, trying to goad us into breaking the law somewhere. Breaking the law. Yeah, the Selkath want to maintain their neutrality in this war we're fighting with the Sith. 
and they enforce it very strictly. Okay. So we just have to sit here and let the Sith insult us, and we can't raise a hand against them. Otherwise, the Republic will face severe Colto export restrictions, and that could lose us the war altogether. That is more than fair. Okay. That is shit. <laughs> Especially if you have to be this close in proximity to them. But, I mean, rules are rules. Why are there Sith on Manan, though? Well, for the Colto, of course. Really, that's the only reason anyone would want to be here. Mm -hmm. It's the only reason the Selkath built Ato City in the first place. To explore Colto. Okay, fair enough. So, they both stay here? The Selkath think that by staying neutral, they can play both sides. Selling Colto to everyone that needs it, and making themselves too valuable to be worth conquering. Well, that, and they threaten to destroy the only natural source of Colto on the planet if anyone tries to attack them. But I think they're underestimating the length the Sith will go to to get what they want. They're probably planning something already. Is there anything else you require? Oh. Really? Well, I mean, that makes sense. Never mind, I should go. Of course. If you have any other questions, you should probably see Roland Wan. He's the Republic diplomat here. He's by the Republic Enclave, near the visitor residences. Okay. If you don't know where that is, go north from here, then south past the port official in the first courtyard, east into the second courtyard, then north, then east again. You got that? Have a pleasant no. stay, Master Jedi. You said that way too fast for me to get any of that, but okay, whatever. I'll figure it out. Okay, away I go. Whee! Merchant. Greetings, human, and welcome to the Otto City Visitor's Provisional Stand. Wow, that's a mouthful. We are here to provide visitors with all manner of indigenous treats and products produced right here on Manan. We carry all manner of foods and provisions and have contacts with resellers across the world to provide you, the customer, with the best shopping experience possible. How is it that the Otto City Provisional Company can help you today? Um, how about tell me about Otto City? Otto City is a center of trade and commerce for all of Manan. Indeed, for this entire sector. It is the only known source of Kulto in the galaxy, and thus one of the most important worlds. This city was constructed by We Selkath so that other races and cultures could experience the wonders that Manan has to offer. Tell me about Manan, then. Manan is the home world of We Selkath. It is here that our race has lived and thrived for uncounted millennia. With our valuable supply of Kulto, we have become an important player in intergalactic politics. We have taken a neutral stance in this current galactic war between the Sith and the Republic, as we believe that violence is not a permanent solution. Is there another way in which I can assist you? Them for now. Rest assured that as long as Manan is here, the Otto City Provisional Company will be here to serve your needs. Good day to you, Sentient. Alrighty then. Beautiful. And... Cleaning droid. Oh, your name. Greetings! Forgive me if this seems an odd question, Offworlder, but might you have any exotic species for sale? Nothing dangerous, mind you. Uh, what sorts of exotic species? Anything non-sentient and non-carnivorous will do, though creatures that are easy to manage are preferred. Is that understandable? Why would you want to buy animals? Ah, good question! The Selkath have little exposure to life from other planets, you see, but our government hopes to change that. We are setting up a zoological compound for visitation by the public, and are hoping to stock it with the non-offensive foreign creatures of all types. The only problem right now is actually procuring the exotic species we need. Selkath import restrictions are quite prohibitive, to say the least. So, you want to smuggle them? I would not use such a harsh word, Offworlder. Let us say that I am interested in, in engaging in private trade. That is allowed, according to our laws. Finding Offworlders that deal in such trade is most difficult, however. I have become quite desperate. Might you have what I seek? 
I mean, I have some Gizka, if you're interested. Gizka, you speak of the small bipedal amphibians with the overly high re reproductive rate, correct? Oh, no, I'm afraid I can't take those. A compatriot of mine made the mistake of purchasing a pair of such creatures several months ago. Within weeks, our storage facilities were nearly overrun. If you are in possession of such creatures, I hope you keep them separated. If not, then you have my condolences. Is there no way I can convince you to take them off my hands? I do not think so, no. They have proven to be far too much trouble in the past. I mean, I would really like to get rid of those creatures. I am sure you would. They are practically a nuisance. I have no need of them, however, as I stated. How about if I paid you a hundred credits as well? Would that help? I suppose it would. I'm not looking forward to the trouble this would cause, but if it will help you out, I will do what I can. I shall send some of my people by your vessels shortly to remove the Giska. Good day to you, Offworlder. Hey! He got rid of him. That's fine by me. I got rid of him, then I no longer have to deal with him. That's fine by me. Leaving the security zone, cameras deactivated. Fair enough. A uh, Sith soldier. Time to listen to your stories. Got a full shipment of Palta ready to load before my ship is Okay. I guess this is their offloading dock. That's West Central. I wonder what's further down here. Come on, let me. There we go. Didn't want to let me through for some fucking reason. Kind of dumb. Docking bay. I get it. Okay. It's telling me about the fucking cameras again. Private Sith Docking Bay. Security clearance required. Huh. So that docking bay is for the bigwig Sith, and the other one is just for moving Kulto off-world. Alright. Fair enough. Uh, can I see a map of this area? Okay, yeah, the only way off is either using the Ebon Hawk to get out of here, or... Go to the West Central. Okay, fair enough. Republic Embassy. The Republic soldier you met in the docking bays on Manan seems to have seemed to think you might have a hard time finding the embassy here in the city. Perhaps it's a big place. He said you go south to the first courtyard, then east to the second courtyard, and then it's in the northeast area section of that area. Oh, so it gives me a gives me directions. Okay. Fair enough. You have been advised to see Roland Wan at the Republic <laughs> Embassy for further information on Manon. Roland Wan. Okay. Wan Luigi. Okay. I'm going to stop doing that now. Because I am stupid. <laughs> okay. Beautiful. Visitors area. All right. Yeah, talk to either of you guys. I be of assistance to you, Padawan. Uh, I was wondering if we could talk. What is it you would like to speak to me about? Nothing for now. Perhaps later. Okay. Yeah. What do you want? Uh, nope. Your I choice. can't get anything more out of them. All right. Actually, that was not the button I meant to press. <laughs> I keep doing that. I'm mildly annoyed at myself. What I meant to do was go to the party selection and uh, look at some of the rest of my people, including T3. And uh, get them leveled up. Because why not? Oh, jeez. He's so dark side. Holy shit. All right. Um... Hair and eh, let's put demolitions up. Let's do that. 
and then we'll put the other two in repair after. Ah, now we can put stuff in attributes. Okay. More into dexterity. Good. Um, into repair. Beautiful. Feats. Battle droid logic upgrade. I can't see that. There it is. Huh. Fully experienced with the rigors of combat, the droid is able to self-upgrade its tactical reasoning and maximize its defensive potential. So that adds a plus six to defense. Okay, fair enough. Um, oh. HK is good with blaster rifles. Okay, fair enough. Here I have put it in fucking the time for two weapon fighting and he's good at fucking blaster rifles. Okay. All right. Fuck me, I guess. Um, rapid shot. Why not? Okay, well, now for T3M4, if I can stop hitting the wrong buttons, that'd be nice. Uh, and put that in demolitions. Oh, it's a cross-class skill. That's annoying. Okay, well, fair enough. Droid upgrade, class two. How about that? Um, this, these aren't going to be necessary in the slightest. Um, constitution? Nor intelligent. Well, intelligence wouldn't be a bad option. Eh. Yeah, it wouldn't be terrible. All right. There, there, and there. What? What? The, the, what? Oh, I have four this time. Why is it only four? What the fuck? I'm confused. Oh, because I had one left over from the other one. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense now. That makes sense. Okay. There we go. That's what I meant to do. All right. And... Hmm. Don't need to put it in those. Why not put it in toughness? There we go. That's a good idea. I like that idea. All right. And there's that and that. Yes, I know I haven't spent all of them, but there's a reason. Okay. And then awareness and that and that. And then... Another one in toughness. Sounds like a good idea to me. Attributes. Another one in intelligence. Haha. -ha. Now we're at five, and now I don't need to do that stupid bullshit of every level up having to save one of them. Uh, let's put it in demolitions. There we go. Battle droid logic upgrade. Hell yeah. Which is what I want. I could put a focus on the blaster pistol. Or I could just up toughness one more time. Let's go with toughness. Perfect. Alright. Party selection. Let's... Oh, mission's at 13. Why is mission at 13? I don't recall when that was a thing. Bastila and Karth. Sure, why not? Buzz, kill, and killjoy. Why not? Let's bring them. Uh, just so I can level them up. Uh, these are cross-class skills. This is not. Okay. Um... Hmm. Go with Power Blast. That's probably a good idea. Yeah. I like that idea. Um, attributes. Yeah, a little... Why not put another one in Strength? Why not? Um, awareness, and then Treat Injury. Okay. And... Uh, 
Do I bother with implants? Eh, I don't think so. Not with Karth. Master Power Blast or Master Toughness. Fuck it. Let's go Master Toughness. Oh, and he can go up to fucking 13. All right, that's good to know. Saves me from having to figure that out later. Uh, feats. That's another feat we can put right there. Worked out beautifully. Awesome. Now, Bastila. Get her up. There we go. Powers. Let's go, Night Valor. There we go. And attributes. Charisma. And then there. Beautiful. Paralysis and Master Sense. Fair enough. Hmm. Huh. Let's put this in improved toughness here. Hmm. Huh. Okay, fucking whoever decided to race down my fucking road. Your speed bumps, you know, you stupid asshole. Okay. There, we'll put that there. And only 12. Alright, that's fine. Well, that deals with all the level ups I need to do. So, let's make that uh, Jolie and Juhani. Because why not? There we go. We're all good. We're all good. All the level ups are done. All the talking I can possibly do is good. I have a feeling you're a Pazak player. I'm just going to skip you for now. Visitor's area. Ooh, security droid. How about that? Selkath port official. Okay, so we are basically in Manan proper. Kinda. <laughs> so I'm going to end the episode here for right now because we've done plenty as it is already. So... Thank you all so much for watching. Click the subscribe button if you like these videos and you want to see more. And click the like button if you like this particular video. And share and comment so we can bring more people into this community. We can talk about the games we're playing together. And I will see you all in the next episode. This has been the one the only Stray Cat playing games and leveling up uh, everyone. Because I figured, fuck it, might as well do it now. On top of the fact that we are in Manan and going to be finishing up quests and picking up others. And probably best to get most of this done now. Because... Who knows when it'll help me out later for you. <laughs>